Eli, big day for you, announcing your commitment to Michigan. What led you to this point? What did, what did you like about that program? And from you went up there multiple times, right? Yeah, yeah, I went up there uh, running on 10 times. It'll be my 10th time next time I'm up there. Um, the biggest thing that just led me to Michigan was the relationships I built along the way. You know, not just with the coaches, but with the people in the building, the people around the town, you know, it's like we would go out to eat up there and they would know who I am. Um, now, I don't know if that's just the coaches trying to play me up, but relationships I was able to build, friends I've been able to make is really just what led me along the way. Not too many people from East Tennessee make their way up to Michigan. I know there was a Gatlinburg Pittman player uh, many, many years ago who went up there, but um, what drew your interest up there to begin with? When did they start kind of contacting you and how did this all kind of begin? Uh, Michigan, they were the second team to offer me, you know, uh, EKU was the first. You know, I love EKU, I love what EKU does, but I remember that coach told me that I've got bigger and better things planned in my future and I'll always be grateful for him, um, you know, and then just being able for Michigan, having them be the first on me, I don't want to necessarily say, you know, I was going there from the beginning, but I've had more of an opportunity to get to know everybody up there, watch them and how they play and see where they have me fit in the offense. You had offers from the Blue Bloods of college football and how does how has that changed you? How has that made you kind of mature to grow up to just invest time to research all of these places? You know, what I've been able to do, I've been blessed. You know, I, it's no secret I've been blessed and I can only thank the man above for what he's done for me and bless me with my athletic ability and things of that nature. But, you know, being able to see all these different schools and what they offer, you know, be able to when I be able to learn what I want to study in school um, and see what school fits me the best and just with the things they offer, the way, you know, their football programs ran, the way their offenses ran, tight end centric or not, and traveled to all these different places with me and my mom, you know, it's been me and her around the way. So I think that it's made me be able to understand I've been put in a situation that not a lot of people have been lucky enough to be in, and I've got to be able to take the most out of the experience. You have another year of high school football left, but right now we're watching Michigan make a really nice playoff run. How much do you already feel like a part of it and are, are just kind of rooting you, rooting them on? Um, you know, I think it's great, you know, being able – coach. it feels like coaches calling me every week, you know, just checking in on me, seeing how I'm doing, um, making me feel as I, if I'm already part of the team. The couple times I've been able to go up there this year, you know, I've spent some time with all the guys in the room. You know, I've made really good friends up there already, which I think will help me when I get up there and start school and I'll have somewhere to fit in and I won't be a loner and things of that. So. Ohio State also offered, and how much have you learned about this rivalry and, and seeing both sides of it, um, learning about each school? Uh, I mean, I won't, say, I won't say I feel like I've learned everything about it, you know, because there's always that little bit of uh, ambiance that you'll never be able to know, you know, mm -hmm. and it's, it's, a lot, it's a lot like the Iron Bowl, you know, being from Tennessee and seeing what the SEC really means, you figure out from both sides, you know, like at Ohio State, they don't even call them Michigan. They call them the team up north. Mm -hmm. And the fact that all the M's get crossed out on Ohio State's campus and all the O's get crossed out on Michigan's campus, it just, I think it's really amazing to see how people, you know, when they have a team and they can root for a team, they really react and want their team to succeed. Michigan's plans for you once you get there, um, tight end I mean is that kind of what they're wanting you to do yeah they're wanting me to be a, a tight end esque you know they're fullback right now Max Bredesen um, they're kind of wanting me to take over for him you know once he leaves if he decides to stay for his uh, for his fifth year um, so he's a sophomore right now be a junior or junior right now he's junior right now he'll be a senior next year if he stays for his fifth year uh, they'll kind of want me to learn from him and hopefully by the time I'm a redshirt freshman take over his role. So what do you feel like individually you will need to do to make sure that you're ready for that transition and to maybe even, you know, play right away? Um, you know, just bigger, stronger, faster. Like I've always said, you know, I've got great coaches here, uh, Coach Nix, Coach Sweetland, that will get me ready on the football field. And then over at D1 with Devin Driscoll, you know, just being able to work with him for almost a year now. The steps, you know, forward I've taken, you know, the steps I've progressed in the last year alone just from working from him. You know, I've dropped my 40 a whole, like, tenth and a half of a second. You know, I've gone up, like, 35 pounds in my bench press. I'm more powerful. I'm more explosive. I'm jumping higher. And I can just know that I'm going to keep working with him and keep getting better at that. So.
to see this commitment happen, and I know signing day is still a little bit away for you, but to see this all kind of come true, when did you start dreaming about this? When was this part of your plan? Uh, I was uh, I was six years old. Um, I remember watching my uncle. He was a quarterback at William Blunt from 2009 to 2012, and I used to think that was the NFL. So I remember asking my grandmother every Friday why you know my uncle why he wasn't playing on Sundays, and I just I wanted to be like him and you know get to get to that level. And now that I'm here at that level, and I've been you know lucky enough to have an opportunity to play at the other level, it's just about getting better, you know. And if football, if I get to college and the NFL isn't for me. I'm going to go and I'm going to hopefully coach, but I can go be the best man I can be. Last thing, you mentioned your Alcoa coaches. From your football intelligence standpoint, IQ, people talk about that a lot with you. Uh, how much have you learned and consumed and, and just kind of grow that educationally to make sure that, again, you understand the college game, you can go in and learn concepts and pick up on it right away? Um, a lot. You know, I think Coach Sweetland and Coach Nix, they're the best in the game at that. And I think being able to, you know, learn from Coach Sweetland, be able to watch film with him, you know, I feel like I've started seeing what he's seeing and being able to explore certain things that defenses that we play run. And then another thing with Coach Nix and being able to learn what – defenses or offenses are supposed to do and you know coach Nix being the best defensive coach in the country I, I don't care what you say coach Nix is the best coach in the country um, being able to learn what a defense is supposed to do I can use that on offense and figure out you know okay so if my O lineman does this you're supposed to do this and if I get there before you I'll win and I think that being able to learn from those two specifically has helped me more than anything up to this point in my career.